Welcome to the What to Watch video update. This is a weekly video where I pick out all the charts that I'm really focused on for right now. Now, some of these charts you're going to see in every video that I do each week. Others kind of come and go. And I try to break them down into positive areas and negative areas. But sometimes there are charts that I have in the positive area, but there's negative things we're watching for. And the inverse of that is also true. There could be some charts in the negative area that actually have some positive things. And these change day by day, and I go over them in the daily video update. This is being prepared for Monday, October 21st. There's a thing called the SPX Investing Program. It's a program that I have developed. It's free until the end of 2024. You're welcome to check that out. There's a link below this video. There's also an email address if you have any questions you're more than welcome to send me an email. And the daily video is the real foundation of the analysis that I do. On the outside, I have a lot of weekly videos that I do, but everything is meant to tie into the daily video. All right, let's go through and look at some of the positive things. Now, this is positive, but could also easily turn negative. When we look at sentiment, we're coming in at 75 now. And you can look back and see when we get at 75 or above, that means that the market is a little too positive, or what they have labeled here is extreme greed. And that means that we're possibly going up too far too fast. Everybody thinks the market's going to just keep going up, and that's about the time when things start to reverse. Well, we've been around this level. We've been positive now as far as sentiment is concerned, but we start to take note of this when we get to 75 or above, and that's where we're at right now. So it's positive, but... We're also cautious about this at the same time. We keep an eye on the condition of the trend of the S&P 500. This is looking positive for right now. The black line here is the ADX. It's above its moving average and going up. That suggests a strengthening trend. The green line is above the red line. That suggests that we're in a positive trend. So this is still looking good. And this chart is intermediate term, where the next chart is more short term, we're also looking good and positive as far as the short-term trend is concerned. But we are concerned about volume, and I tend to keep this chart with the other charts. I want to keep them together. The only day that we saw this last week that was above average with volume was the down day on Tuesday. All the other days, including Friday, which was options expiration, we're below average with volume. And that is a bit of a concern to see the S&P going up and volume actually dropping off. Here's a daily chart. And the reason I brought up this chart is you can see this dashed line right here, right above current prices. This is a pivot point, And we have not been able to break above that with the S&P 500. It would be more positive if we could actually get above this, set another new all-time high and close above this dashed line here. But until then, we're concerned that this could be providing overhead resistance. But when you look at this chart by itself, yeah, we're positive. We're above both moving averages. The moving averages are going up. On the bottom, though, is where we're concerned. You can see the spike up in volume. That was the down day. But all the other days have been below average with volume. This is positive, but you could see some negative things here as well. This is a growth and value chart intraday. And when the market's really showing some strength, the blue line will be above the red line, even though they're on different scales. Right now, we have the red line above the blue line, but for the most part, these lines have been going up, so that's positive. It would be even more positive if the blue line could cross back above the red line. We look at S&P growth to value, where we had been looking better in the early part of October. That's when the market was going up. Then we started to see some weakness. Now we could be seeing this show some improvement as we're going back up with the intraday growth to value ratio. Discretionary, when we compare it with staples and dual ratio, this is looking pretty solid right now. Discretionary has been showing some improvement, but where the strength of this ratio is coming from is that we've been seeing some weakness lately in the staples. But as long as this is going up, that tends to be more positive for the market. We're looking really good here with the advanced decline based on price and volume, setting new all-time highs, especially after Friday. 
This is looking really solid right now, and both the moving averages are going up. We're also looking pretty solid when we look at the new highs minus the new lows. A lot of green and not much red. The five period moving average is pretty much going sideways, but the 10 period is continuing to go up. This suggests good internal strength in the S&P. Accumulation distribution, which is a smart money indicator because it not only takes price, but also volume into account. This is going up and we're above an advancing moving average. So that's positive. The concern is that we might be getting a little far away from this moving average. So that has a tendency to come back down to the moving average when this happens. But for right now, this is still positive. We're above zero and going up with the advanced decline ratio. So internally in the S&P, that's still looking solid. And the vortex has the green line going up and the red line going down. That's also positive. The condition of the 20 period moving average, we're going up with the green line and the blue line, and we're kind of right in the lines right now. But the fact that everything is going up is positive. And we're above the 20 period simple and exponential moving averages. So the short term trend is positive. We also look at a short term rainbow going from 10 periods up to 50 periods. All the lines are going up and prices above all the lines. So this just confirms that the short-term trend is positive. And then here's a number of different moving averages here. Above all the plotted moving averages and the moving averages are going up. So we are positive on all time frames when you use moving averages to measure that. But we're getting a little far away from the 50 period moving average right now. We're not too far away from the 20. That did get extreme, but has since come back. But we're getting a little far away from the 50 period. What this does is when we get too far away from either a 20, 50, or 200-day moving average, this works like an oscillator, and we get an extreme positive or negative reading. And typically what will happen is if we get too far away from that moving average, price will have a tendency to come back to the moving average, which in this case could be negative, but the fact that everything is still going up and we're getting high readings is positive as well. We look at the advanced decline line based on a cumulative basis for the S&P, just based on price. We're setting an all-time high here. We're also setting an all-time high with the cumulative measurement based on volume. And we look at the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line here, setting an all-time high. So this is suggesting the broader market is also positive. And we also keep an eye on a regular NYSE advanced decline line, also looking quite positive now. And we break that out based on common stock with price setting an all-time high and also setting an all-time high based on volume. The McClellan oscillator, which we were concerned about this because it had dropped below zero, now it's coming back above zero. So that has now turned positive. And when that's positive, the summation index based on price and volume are going up. So we're looking positive here as well. And also, we had dropped a negative with the NYSE McClellan oscillator, but we had come back and were able to cross back above zero. So we're turning back up with the summation index based on price and volume. Swollen trading oscillator. We're positive because we're above zero, but we set an all-time high and went up on Friday. But you notice how this is rolling over? Doesn't necessarily mean we're going to fall, but this is just a warning sign to us. And we're flattening out and actually starting to decline just a little bit here based on volume. This is still positive when you look at it since they're both above zero. But the fact that they're showing some weakness is a little bit of a concern. Parabolic SAR continues to be positive since the dots are underneath. And our momentum is shifting back more to positive. We're not full-blown positive, but we're trying to turn back up with the slope oscillator. The TSI is actually looking more positive. The intermediate term with the MACD, the PMO, and PPO are turning back to positive. The TRIX, which is a longer term oscillator, starting to look more positive. We're still negative with the KST, but it is turning up. And if we keep going up, it'll probably cross above its moving average. Copy curve, which had been negative, is now switching back over to positive. And we're looking really strong here with the bullish percent index. We're above 70, even though we're chopping around a little bit. This is still suggesting that things are positive, but maybe a little too positive. When we get really high readings like this, sometimes that can slow things down or at other times actually signal a reversal. The NYSE bullish percent index coming off of a very high reading right now. 
and seeing an improvement and still positive with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. Those stocks above their 20 period moving averages, above 50 and going up, that's positive. And then we break this out in a simple study where when we're above 70, that's just showing good short term upward momentum. Stocks above their 50 day moving average, also positive. And we're positive with those stocks above their 100-day moving averages, but maybe a little too positive here. We're getting a little overextended. And this is more intermediate to even a little bit long-term. But when we look at the 200-period moving average study, we're looking positive here, but not necessarily extreme positive. And a weekly chart here, the S&P, we're well above this R2 pivot level. And you can see, going back to the beginning of 2024, this is a really solid looking up move. Now, we did have that decline last spring and over the summer, but we've been able to recover that. And overall, this is really looking strong. The Wilshire set an all-time high on Friday. That is another broad market measure. And the total U.S. stock ETF also setting an all-time high. So the broader market as well as the S&P are looking pretty strong. Now, the Dow, the reason I brought this up, it did set an all-time high, but there's another R1 level. This is a pivot level, and this could be providing overhead resistance. We're also seeing that on the S&P 500 chart. So if we can get above this with the Dow and the S&P and then close above this level, that would be even more positive. The NASDAQ looking solid here, but still has a ways to go to get back to its all-time high, as does the NASDAQ 100, but it's still looking positive. The NASDAQ 100, and I want to keep that with the NASDAQ, the other NASDAQ 100 charts. We're seeing momentum really start to drop now. We're, we're beginning to drop below the moving average. So this is actually negative. Now, we have a good solid update with the NASDAQ 100. This could actually switch back and look more positive. But in the meantime, this is a little bit of a concern to us. Small caps, doing pretty well, but just coming up to the high end of their range right now. If we can break out and really start to see a trend instead of this move where they really go up and then pull back, go up and then pull back, go up and then pull back, can we see things actually begin to break out? That would be more positive for the small caps. We also look at the Russell 2000 small cap index where we're just coming off of a really high reading with the RSI, but the momentum continues to be positive as well. We're well above the 50-day moving average. So this is positive, but pretty choppy. Then we do a ratio between the small caps and the S&P. Even though small caps have been doing better, the S&P is doing even better than that. And that's why this ratio is going down. We want to see this go above both the blue line and the red line and actually see a golden cross with this ratio to get more favorable with the small caps. The mid caps also going sideways right now, but setting all time highs here. Still below this R1 pivot level. This could be providing overhead resistance. Financial sector, setting an all-time high and looking solid there. The FANG index, positive, but still has a ways to go to get to its all-time high. We're right in between this shorter-term trend line and this longer-term trend line with the FANG index. If we could break above this, that would even be more positive. If we break down, that could turn things more negative. And we look at what the market thinks is going to be a soft landing, and that's what the market is pretty much convinced of right now with this stock-to-bond ratio. This is another bond to stock ratio, which is just an inverse of what we just looked at. When this is going down, that means that bonds are underperforming stocks, which means stocks are outperforming bonds. And we look at the S&P 1500 <clears throat> and compare it with one to three year bonds, looking really solid here. Another broad market measure going with three to seven year bonds, also looking very positive. The tech sector, not doing as strong, not coming back to this previous high here when we look at the ratio between the tech sector and three to seven year bonds, but still looking positive since it's above the rainbow. Weekly chart of the NASDAQ 100, looking positive here. The ratio between the NASDAQ 100 and the Dow also looking pretty solid still. And then the NASDAQ 100 to the small caps also looking really strong. We look at the QQQs, the three to seven year bonds, looking positive here, but we have not been able to get back above this previous high set last summer. And home construction, really looking good when we compare it to three to seven year bonds. This is a very highly interest rate sensitive environment. The fact that this is going up is positive for the market.
Large cap growth is looking really positive as well. This is showing a little bit of weakness. The semiconductors have been under some pressure lately when we compare it to the Dow, but it's not really tanking. It's just kind of chopping along, even though this going back up would be more positive for the market. Now we look at some negative side, the side of things. The VIX, it had been about 20 for most of the week, and that's when we get a little bit concerned. It's dropped down below 20 right now, but we're still getting a high reading with the VIX. But the momentum, as we've been coming back down, has shifted over, as measured by the MACD, is now going down. That could actually be more positive for stocks, because when the VIX is going down, that means stocks are going up. And we've been watching this for well over a week. The correlation between the VIX and the S&P getting a very high reading. We're above this dashed line, and that means that the market is getting nervous here, but we're just not seeing that played out in price, at least yet. And the SKU index has also been up in this red area for quite a while, meaning that the market is still anticipating a big move. But we go up, we go down, and we stay in this red area for the time being. This is a little bit of a concern. Now, the chicken money flow is a smart money indicator. It's still positive since it's green, but we've been declining with the chicken money flow, and the red line is starting to go back down. We want to keep an eye on this. Now, some of this could be dropping because we've been seeing below average volume. And the chicken oscillator is also still positive here since it's above zero, but it is declining. And there's a positive side and a negative side from this chart. The equal weight S&P 500 setting an all-time high after Friday. Looking solid here, but not necessarily confirming that with the QQQ equal weight ETF. But it's not all that far behind. Small cap growth versus value, not positive right now. Mid cap growth versus value, also negative right now. And we're seeing this okay. It's actually positive, but I wanted to keep the growth to value charts together. The S&P growth to value ratio is looking a little bit better, but not really showing a lot of current strength. And we look at the growth versus value ETFs coming down to the bottom end of the rainbow here. We would expect this to be going up. That would be more positive for the market. If this breaks down below the rainbow, that could be more negative. And the growth to value ratio is not really showing a lot of strength right now. When we look at the Qs to S&P, we're below the moving average. Discretionary to the S&P has dropped below the moving average, and now the moving average is going down. And we're right on the moving average when we look at large cap growth versus large cap value. So the large caps on the moving average dropping down, it's still right on the moving average with the mid caps and dropping below the moving average with the small caps. We want to see all of these going up to be more positive. The S&P to utilities ratio for the most part has been going down as the S&P has been strong, but utilities have, have, a, have a tendency lately to be even stronger and when that happens, this ratio is going down. It would be more positive if, if this ratio was going up. We look at the staples to tech ratio. When this is going down, that means the tech sector is outperforming. We were starting to bounce back up, and we still have a golden cross here with this ratio, meaning the staples were starting an uptrend versus tech. But lately, this has been pulling back. If this could continue to go down, that would be more positive for tech. And the staples to S&P 500 ratio, this is going back up right now, even though it has been declining. We want this to decline. That's more positive. But the fact that this is going back up a bit is a bit of a concern to us. Then we look at TIPS, which are Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and we compare them with 7- to 10-year bonds. And we're going back up now. Now, we were going back up at the end of 2021 into 2022, that's because inflation was going up and interest rates were going up. Now, lately, interest rates have been going back up, but inflation has been coming down. And so we're wondering about the context of why this is actually going up. It could be that we're just getting ready to go into a higher interest rate environment, where even though interest rates are higher than the market would like, the S&P can still continue to go up. We want to keep an eye on weekly jobless claims. We saw a real spike up in the previous week, and then this week's reading really dropped off, but we're still seeing the moving average going up. And we're watching this to see the condition of the employment situation. Continuing claims also continuing to go up here. If this shows more weakness, that could suggest weakness in the economy. 
And we're keeping an eye on the 10-year yield, where it had really been coming down, but then started to really go back up. We're just kind of chopping around over the last few sessions. We want to keep an eye on this one, too. Oil, we're mainly watching for geopolitical reasons for what's going on in the Middle East, but we're actually going down with oil and dropped below 70. The dollar is in a downtrend as measured by these moving averages, but has been really strong lately. The market likes a weaker dollar. And we've come back up to the 200-day moving average and haven't been able to break above that. We're wondering if that is going to provide overhead resistance. If the dollar starts going back down, that would actually be more positive for stocks. And then we have this thing called the Hindenburg Omen. And here's the definition here, if you're not familiar with that. There's no update with the chart other than new days coming on here. But the initial signal, the spike up, was given to us on September 5th. And then it was confirmed by another spike on September 12th. And the perma bears love this indicator. But we're not really seeing that played out yet as far as price. But we want to keep an eye on this, especially if we get more spikes up here, which is more of a confirmation. Because we saw that right before the whole COVID crash. And we saw it right at the end of 2021. So it's positive for right now, and it's really just something we're watching for the time being, but we want to keep an eye on this. And if we start to see price show some weakness, that could suggest that things could get quite a bit weaker. But for right now, things are looking quite positive. So thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you in the next video.